Good morning. It's early in AM and welcome to AM Wood Turning. My name is Alan Mills. Uh, today's project. I haven't done a live edge in a while. And uh, I have my final piece of cherry. Shout out to Jason Harris. Also a shout out to Chris Walker. He watches every one of my YouTube uh, videos. And it's my final piece of cherry and we're going to attempt to turn a live edge, like a banana bowl out of it. Um, I've already marked it. I've got the chainsaw off a little bit of it and then we'll get started. Well, all right, here we are, all mounted up, ready to go. A um, Couple quick tips for you. I wear pocket tees a lot of time. If you want to keep shavings out of your pocket, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, you can put tape over your pocket or turn your shirt inside out. <laughs> um, another quick tip, I keep an old candle laying around and if you just rub a little bit on your wrist now and then, it helps keep your tools smooth, you know, gliding smooth. Alrighty. And um, as I said, this is a piece of cherry, the last in my stash. I tried to get on here as evenly as I could, but as we turn some of it away, we'll have to, and I'll show you, but we've got to align it. We have to, that's why I've got it between centers, so we can move the center and keep the grain lined up. The goal is to have it the same height, and this will be the bottom, and this will be the top side of the bowl. The goal is to keep the wings at the same height and the pith that's on here in the same position on the sides and have everything wide and uniform and all that, the same thickness and all that. So without further ado, I wanna get on it. Gear up. Now we're going to start this out at about 500 RPM. It's doing fairly well there. Grab your bevel and figure out where it's going to cut at. Very gently. I'm watching the shadow so I know where it is. You can't see it where your tooltip is. As we get it more in balance, we'll be turning the speed up. Turn the speed up a little bit. It also helps having your speed up. You're not cutting as much air. Well, you're still cutting as much. But it seems more solid on your tool.
need to adjust the tool rest a little bit. Looking better already. I've got it pretty well centered where it needs to be. There are several ways you can get your grain oriented. Um, it can be as simple as using your tool rest. It can be as simple as using your tool rest or and having a reference point to make sure everything is the same height. Uh, some people use the little cat lasers, which I guess would be very accurate. But you need to have it before you cut a tenon or a, or a mortise. And this is green wood and we're in the bark, so I check it now and then. Make sure my center's still tight. Generally, if you can grab a hold of it, at least, I don't know, I learned this on my own. If I can spin it with my fingers and it kind of, you know, it's loose, free from the wood, then you, I need to tighten up a little bit. That's a very sharp point. It's a 60 degree cone on there. And after a while of turning and taking material off, it, the green wood smashes in and the point goes further in. And if you don't check it now and then, it will lose its grip and you'll end up with a flying log. Um, if I needed to adjust it, I would figure out where the high spot is and then just unscrew it and move it over a little bit and tighten it back down. You can also measure it. Measure where it is with a rule or something. Matter of fact, we'll do that. Measure it where it is with a ruler. And you would mark it, flip it to the other side, and see where you're, where, you know, mark it again, and see how, where the difference is in them. And then you would split that, the difference between those two marks, if it was just an inch, for instance, uh, you'd be at a half inch. And then you could use that to adjust to where the halfway in between, and that should get them perfectly level across there. This is looking very good. And I don't believe I'm going to mess with it. Right here. And there's my top edge there. It's maybe a sixteenth off. And I believe we're going to roll with that. See if I don't move it at all. Actually, we'll just use the tool rest to mark that and see where it is. Right there, it's barely touching on this side. And it could go just a pinch. It's close enough that I'm not going to worry about it though. We're only about a sixteenth of an inch out.
double check everything make sure it's all tight now that's probably somewhere between six and seven hundred rpm it might be seven hundred The trick with a live edge like this is if you can manage to keep the bark on. We're up here at the end, and when you're cutting in this direction, you're going to actually pull it, or push up and lift on the bark, and that's what will pull it off there. It may come off anyway, even the other way, but. So at this point, this is where you would be very carefully come in from the other way to try to keep the stripping the bark off, okay? We've got to take a lot more meat off this, and I'm not concerned about the bark at the moment. If it comes off, it's going to come off in one piece since we're connected all the way. We want to take this bark up and you know, keep cutting until the bark comes up a little bit. That way we have us a nice bowl. That's better. Not bad at all. Now we need to establish our tenon or mortise. Hmm. Tenon or mortise. I believe we're gonna do a tenon. So we have a parting tool. A good tenon needs to have a good square shoulder on the bottom to rest up against. So, I hear Mr. Crow. Now this is the Nova G3 chuck with standard 50 millimeter jaws. The profile on it is straight. Some, some are dovetails, this one is straight. But it's okay to have a little bit of relief towards the center. Give something to grip on because you got a little lip 
all on the inside of here. And a skew is a very good tool for doing it. Almost there. Can't put it back, so it's better. Like I said, measure twice, cut once. That is close enough for wood turners work. Clean it up on the bottom just a little bit. So, Should be fine right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, in an attempt to keep this bark on, I've got some thin down shellac, otherwise known as sanding sealer. <coughs> and uh, we're just gonna coat it liberally, especially on the bark. And then I'm gonna put some CA glue, super glue, around the edge of it uh, after this sets up and this will help keep the glue from staining the wood and hopefully firm up the bark. So away we go. Shellac dries quickly and supposedly it is compatible with every finish. And then we'll be able to get back to work. Want it real good on that bark. As I said, this is thinned down. It's about 50-50 is what I've got thinned to. That'll help it soak even better. Also see a couple minor cracks here coming up from the pith, and we'll glue them up as well. In the hopes that they won't spread. We'll give that a few minutes to dry, and then we'll put the CA glue on. Be right back. Well, all right. Our shellac is dry now, and now we're going to use CA glue. If I can get the lid off. Whoops. Ah. 
Bad news is I just glued my finger. <laughs> Blooper. All right. Put some down in these cracks. and all around the edge of the bark. Well, we're ready to flip it around.
and that's probably just about there <laughs> all right time to do the same thing with the slack and the glue from the inside misplaced my brush somewhere so we'll just use this So the shellac is dried, mostly. It might still be a little damp. And now we're going to use CA on it again. On this bark. In the hopes we can keep it on here. And if we have some of the same cracks on the inside. That we hope won't amount to anything. This wood is still fairly green. It was taken down, this cherry, by the way. And it was taken down, I guess about three months back, something like that. As I said, I hadn't done one of these in a while. We lost bark in a couple places. It's all a learning experience, right? It still looks good. My wife will love it. Now for the fun stuff. 
sanding. <laughs> we all love sanding, don't we? And we're going to go with, uh, we turned it, get some sanding, and uh, I'm not going to go for a real high gloss on this. I don't think it warrants it. Um, I'm going to use clear Danish. So, And the last step will be cleaning up the bottom of it. We'll have to flip it around. That's probably about three quarters of an inch. But I don't want this thing flying off after putting all this work into it. There she goes. Ta-da! Now I have to work on this bottom some. I want to show you how thin we were, how close we were to the jaws. <laughs> The chuck jaws actually go up against there, and that's about a quarter, quarter inch. And I was very, very thin at that point. <laughs> One little slip, and you would I would have been on the jaws. All righty. And here is our pretty little bowl. Thank you for visiting my channel today, and I hope and pray that all of you and your families are safe from this virus we're having right now. This is day seven for me, and uh, we're getting a little stir crazy, but it is what it is. Um, please like and subscribe, and click that bell if you don't mind, that way you won't miss my next video. Thank you. Have a good day.